A couple of months ago we did a video that can help you in buying your next used motorcycle. Today I'm going to show you some of the pitfalls of one of my more recent purchases. Specifically this 2004 Honda ST1300 ABS Pan-European. So take heed and take notes before spending your own money. I found this bike on a local classifieds ad and thought it sounded like a pretty good deal. I was on the hunt for what would be my third ST1300, and these bikes, although they sold well new, are getting harder to find since Honda discontinued them for some insane reason back in 2013, and then butchered the ST successor to a proven and what I believe fantastic platform into a sport tour naked cruiser beggar wannabe called the CTX 1300. I have no idea what the marketing department was mainlining in their veins when they convinced the executives at Honda that a cruiser from this platform would work and as you probably already know it didn't as Honda discontinued the CTX 1300 a year later in 2014. Maybe I'm out of touch with what works and what doesn't as far as styling, I mean look at the way I dress. Uh, but this does not excite me. An overweight and underpowered, semi-naked, I don't know what to call it kind of bike. If Honda wanted to update the styling of the Pan-European, they could have done just that and not had purists like myself losing their lunch in trash cans surrounding the motorcycle exhibits when the CTX 1300 was launched. Sadly, the decision to do away with the production of the Pan-European for Honda ended a legacy of incredibly reliable and sought-after bikes that started way back in 1990 with the ST1100. Enough nostalgia for now, on to this purchase and what I could see and uh, figure out when I initially saw it and also what I couldn't see and had to wait till I got home to take it apart to find out everything that was wrong with it. Firstly, the bike was reasonably priced, so that always piques my interest. Although a few years older than what I was looking for, uh, the bikes were all pretty much the same from 2003 to 2013 in the ST1300 line. Now it also had some reasonably low miles. When I went to view the bike, the previous owner had not ridden it for a year and had it in a garage under a cover with a battery tender on it. So thumbs up, pride of ownership. This is good. I liked the bike immediately, despite it having some gaudy accessories. I made a quick checklist the initial day that I went to look at it. Tires badly cupped, yeah, check. Rat's nest of wiring for accessory lighting, uh, check. Uh, right side front fork leaking, check a Rooney. Uh, the previous owner did not have any experience working on the bike himself. He instead took it to what I thought was the Honda dealer. And then after I got the bike home, I went through a folder of service history on the bike and found that in fact, he was taking the bike quite often to what I would call a local hack shop. Uh, it's a shop where they purchase insurance write-offs, some to dismantle and sell for used parts, but many they try and put back on the road at a really unreasonable price. Uh, I've run into their handiwork before on some previous bikes and this Honda definitely reinforced my suspicions that they should probably stick to dismantling insurance write-offs instead of trying to fix other people's motorcycles. This shop also sold the previous owner an incredibly expensive set of heli bars that pretty much look like mini ape hangers on this bike. The bars are not comfortable and limit access to the airbox by preventing the fuel tank from being able to be lifted up. Now you need to do this to get at the airbox. On top of this, they look awful in my opinion and are not appropriate to the bike. Oddly, the previous owner also gave me a brand new K&N air filter. Thank you, 120 bucks saved. Uh, this was another question answered when I tried to get at the airbox, only to find the bars that were in, in the way. Uh, this also resulted in no shop or even the previous owner wanting to change the air filter, which I should have to tell you is not really the way to look after your bike. 
The old air filter had not been changed in many miles, if ever from new, as there was an original Honda brand air filter in the bike. When I found the receipt for the K&N filter, it was from 2009, or roughly 12 years ago. So we could probably safely assume that the air filter hadn't been changed in 14, 13, 15 years at least. Anyways. With every used bike I buy, one of the first things I do is remove all the plastic and check all the vital nuts, bolts, and lubricants. In this process, I also wash the bike before and after the fairings have been removed. This ensures I get a good look at the bike and hopefully find any problems before there are problems on the road. The bike needs a fair amount of maintenance, nothing major, tires, brakes, fork seals, and of course the handlebars put back to stock. For me, this is the only answer, so while we're there, we're going to install some new heated grips. Unfortunately, the heated grips that were already installed were genuine Honda accessory ones for the ST Pan-European. This kit has been discontinued by Honda, and the new old stock ones with the fairing mounted control box are just nowhere to be found. Uh, I've had to order a replacement cowl plastic because we won't be mounting the new heated grip control uh, in the hole that was cut for the Honda unit, it's just too big. I've also had to order a replacement for the right glove box. The rat's nest of wiring for the accessory lighting was in there, and the installer cut a big hole in the box, making it less than watertight. Uh, the other oddity was that the power for these lights was taken from an accessory 12 volt outlet already in the right hand cowl. The installer just up and cut the power outlet power supply so they could hook it up to the accessory lights rather than run a new set of wires from a ignition point or the battery. Now I'm pointing all this out to you so that you can see that even the best looking bike out there can be full of issues when you get the fairings and plastics off. Also, the seller, whether they're conscious of it or not, is not telling you the whole story about their motorcycle. And believe me, everyone's bike is perfect in their own mind. That's of course why they're selling it. Now we're going to spend around $1,000 in parts and probably about 20 hours in labor before we can even ride this bike. So we've ordered a bunch of parts and we'll start bringing this bike back to riding form over the coming weeks. If you'd like to follow along, be sure to like and subscribe and set your notifications so you can see when our next video drops. Until then, we'll be out riding other bikes in the garage, including our 200,000 kilometer BMW R1100RT. But more about this maybe next week. So give a wave when you see us and ride safe.